Next up, this was pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin investor study from Grayscale. And this was just released uh, yesterday. Last night I got an email. So pretty great stuff. I'm going to go over it real quick. And the first thing you got to know is where is this information coming from? So this all came from the methodology. I'll blow this up. This online survey of a thousand U.S. consumers was conducted by eight acre perspective data analytics firm they just you know pretty much called up everybody or emailed or got the information this is from june 26 to july 12th of this year all respondents were between ages of 25 and 64 had primary or shared responsibility for household financial decision making all respondents were involved in some form of personal investing with at least 10,000 in household investable assets and at least 50,000 in household income so they had to had to create this uh, threshold and of course we're looking at this we're like okay these people had in some way shape or form the ability to invest either a little bit or massively into any kind of investment vehicle so what was interesting to me let me blow this up the right way was the interest in Bitcoin. So uh, this is going in the right direction. In 2019, uh, it was only 36%, roughly a third. Still pretty good, not too bad. But in 2020, um, we're looking pretty fantastic and we're hitting that threshold of over 50% to 55%. So that is great. What was uh, interesting to me, which I didn't think this was would be true, but the investment into Bitcoin uh, of what is going on for new people getting in is that it's just happened this year within a very short amount of time frame. So 17%, uh, the question really was, is when did you buy Bitcoin? So the lion's share of people who were asked, it was 83%, 38, 26, 19, 83% had gotten into Bitcoin within the last year. And the bulk of it happened within the past four months. So what happened in the last four months? A lot of bad things. COVID-19, different problems with the economy quantitative easing. So these are people who are concerned about what's happening in the future, and maybe that might have been it, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But uh, what was fascinating was that only 17% got into this more than a year ago. So if you're like me and listening right now, I mean, I've been in since 2017. Some people have been since 2011, 2012, and they are the OGs. So when you take a look at this, you're like, wow, I mean, how many people are getting into it? Because it looks like it's just kind of building and snowball effect uh, just on based on this study. I think as time goes on, especially with all the things we just talked about, PayPal, MicroStrategy, Philly Digital Assets, TD Ameritrade, Paul Taylor Jones, all those things that are kind of building up in the background, it's all going to lead to this nice huge crescendo or uh, another parabolic bull run, but we will see. So this is why they got into it. So they asked the question, why did you get in and was COVID-19 uh, a factor? And 63% said yes, 37 said no. And I, to me, I think to myself, well, if it wasn't the coronavirus, was it just because you really dug down to the fundamentals and you really think about Bitcoin, how great it is? Or was it some other factor like, hey, I see it's going up, I'm going to get into it, or quantitative easing or small businesses going down? I mean, that was the next question. But 63%, um, I mean, it seems kind of morbid, but yes, a pandemic is fueling uh, the Bitcoin rise. So what we got next? So move past this and then coming down. And this was kind of odd. I, I just didn't really understand this. It says investors who characterize potential growth as a motivating factor to get into cryptocurrency. So in 2019, it was about half. And then in 2020, it only went up by 8%. I'm thinking to myself, do people not realize where they're at? I mean, do they not realize how far Bitcoin could potentially go? I mean, obviously not, because we just did a video a couple of days ago which talked about Bitcoin to 500K. And at the very beginning, I thought it was just ridiculous and irresponsible for anybody to talk about Bitcoin going that high. And I was doing this on a Theta live stream. I ran the numbers and I was like, holy shoot, I'm wrong. I'm the one that's uh, ignorant. And uh, you can watch that video uh, again or, or check it out. I'll link it at the very end. So I think when people realize like, oh, well, Bitcoin went to 20K and they kind of think that's where it is. But if you look at what's going to happen and how Bitcoin crypto digital assets can actually you know, really dig into the gold market, which is $11 trillion, on top of tokenizing real estates, on top of derivatives, on top of everything else that, uh, you know, for just for retail investors and FOMO, I mean, 20K is just the tip of the iceberg, I think. A conservative one, if you look at the, you know, the, the Winklevoss, they think conservative is 500K. I think conservative is around 150, but that's just me. Uh, but again, running those numbers, it could be much higher. So 
I think there's a lot of room to grow and a lot of education to be done, which is why I'll be launching the website, Digital Asset News, uh, at the end of this week, or early next week, and it'll be 100% free so people can understand exactly what crypto actually is. I'll let everybody know when it's all ready. Just right now, we're going through beta. All right, let's move down. Again, COVID-19, sure. And this one was interesting. It says more likely to invest in Bitcoin if it was recommended to them by a financial advisor. Now, 31% said that, you know, overall, all the different respondents uh, said that if their investment advisor said, hey, you should get into Bitcoin, about a third said that they would consider it. 40% who are already considering it would actually, you know, highly think about it. But I think it carries more weight than that because you have to understand people who are just not in the game like, like we are, when they have their financial advisor, because they pay financial advisors a good amount of money just to tell them what to invest into. Uh, they're, they're, they're not doing it for free. I'll just say that. So they go there for a specific reason. Like, hey, I don't have time. I got two jobs. I got 10 kids I'm trying to have a social life and I got all these things going on. Uh, just tell me what I have to invest in. So if the investors or the financial uh, advisors say, hey, Pete, I think really we should take, you know, one to three percent of your portfolio and put it in Bitcoin. Uh, look, it's digital gold. It's the best performing asset over the last decade. You can send it to anyone anywhere in the world uh, for next to nothing. It used to cost a nickel, now it costs $12,000. I think we should get into this because I think it can go to, if you believe digital asset news, uh, go to 500K. Uh, let's just put one to 3%. It's kind of risky. Let's just do that. If every single advisor said that, you know where we would be right now. We would be a heck of a lot higher than 13,000. I will just tell you that right now. And I think that the advisors carry a lot more weight than what people are actually letting on. And there's a reason why they go to them. There's a reason why they pay the money. And I think if they said it, they would probably a lot more would actually get into it. Just me thinking. All right. And finishing up, now this wasn't, this was boring. This was interesting. Age. So yesterday we did a Q of the day. And the question was, uh, if everybody's going going to go from gold to Bitcoin, should I get into gold uh, at, at all? And this is what I always talk about is that you should have the new savings account should be gold, silver, Bitcoin. It only makes sense, a lot more sense than putting money into a bank and getting a fantastic yield of 0.0002%. Gold, silver, Bitcoin seems to be more reasonable for me. And so people said, well, if everybody goes from gold to Bitcoin, gold isn't worth anything. So why would you do that? Here's the thing. Gold will always have value. Gold will always have value. And especially with the baby boomer generation, which has the most amount of wealth in the US right now. If you live in outside the US, it could be something different. I have no idea. So you have to understand that the older the person, the more they believe in an asset like gold. Not all the time. I'm not saying I'm not uh, pigeonholing anybody, but the majority, that's pretty much how it is. And this really lays it down. So percentage of audience definitely or probably would consider a Bitcoin investment. Uh, usually the younger, uh, the more you would do that. So 25 to 34, 67% or three fourths said, yeah, I would probably get into Bitcoin. 35 to 44, 68%. That's kind of telling. I mean, still young enough to kind of get into it, but sure. 45 to 54, about half. And 55 to 64, about a third. So these are the people generally who think that gold is uh, more of an asset than Bitcoin. But if you take a look at it, that's still a third of people who are in that age bracket go, yeah, I consider it. So if you got 30% or a third of people, let's just extrapolate that data and just kind of push it all out. If you got a third of people who are in that range who already own gold and say, yeah, I get into Bitcoin, let's say that they allocate, they take out of gold and put into Bitcoin. Well, now you got a third of people who get out of gold into Bitcoin. Do you know how much gold the market cap right now, it's around about $11 trillion. That's what the, that's trillion with the T. So to get 30% of that, now you're looking at, oh, I don't know, a 3 trillion, if my math is right. Double check me in the comment section, it could be wrong. Could be around 3 trillion, maybe not, maybe so, somewhere around there, right? So if you're looking at 3 trillion on top of tokenization of real estate, on top of derivatives, on top of retail investment, on top of FOMO, on top of all the different corporations that are getting into it, Maybe you're sitting at five trillion. You know what a five trillion market cap of Bitcoin actually is? That's around two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Because when we did the numbers for the five hundred k, it was about nine point something trillion would equal five hundred k Bitcoin. So if you're looking at the uh, half of that, hey, 
it could actually be. Now, these are just numbers that we're just kind of guessing and you know getting out there. So don't take my advice. I'm just talking numbers. And then the next uh, telling metric was investing risk tolerance, which was uh, 75% was aggressive, moderate 55, conservative 33. So that makes a lot of sense, right? The more the, the younger you are, the more aggressive you could be, right? So that makes sense with a 25 to 34. 67%, 75. Moderate, maybe about half. That could be as you get older, you don't want to take so many risks. That's about 56%, around 45 to 55, 54. And conservative, older you get, the less uh, aggressive you want to be. And that also stands a reason, so sure. And then these last two statements uh, I thought was interesting. It says, um, this was somebody, an investor who says, you know what, Bitcoin's not tangible. Too many variables with its value. This is from a male investor living in a rural area, age 51, and they're making between 100K and 250K of, of assets. So that's the problem. People think, well, if I can't touch it, if I can't see it, if I can't feel it, it doesn't exist, and therefore it has no value. So the question then is, well, what gives things value? Well, I mean, look at Facebook. Facebook isn't a isn't a physical thing. It's just a social network. Take a look at Google. It's just a search engine. Take a look at Amazon. It's just a platform. So yes, I mean, all these things, I mean, they do have assets. Amazon has warehouses and workers and all those things. Uh, Facebook has buildings and locations and servers and all that stuff. Uh, Google has servers, you know, just like YouTube and everything else. So yeah, I, I get that, but it's really a intangible asset just like uh, Bitcoin. And really with our world going digitized, I mean, those things have value. It's like, I remember when, I remember buying DVDs. Remember buying DVDs? That was awesome. Movie comes out, gotta buy that DVD. Oh, I got it in my collection. And people would have like this huge collection of DVD racks, right? Well, now you just buy the digital version and then store it on Amazon and that's it. You can't really touch that. But there are markets where people sell the digital version of their DVDs or movies that they have bought. And that's a that's a real business. So, again, it's just a different way of thinking. And it's, it's going to take a lot of education. And uh, I think that's the, the next wave. And then lastly, uh, this is from a female investor. She says, our company computer system was hacked by someone wanting a ransom in Bitcoin. So I don't trust it. Uh, to me, when I heard that, I'm like, I would trust it more because <laughs> these hackers did all that work. And they don't want US dollars. They're like, hey, pay us a Bitcoin. To me, I'd be like, I should probably look at Bitcoin. These guys, they just hacked this whole system and all they want is this thing called Bitcoin. Show me all that. So that's really all there is to it. And it's just another example of, of this whole report, just how we are moving into mass adoption. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.